if you've watched parts one, two, three, and four, uh, this is a small extension tutorial that I thought it would be nice to do um, after the fact. A question that we often get when we're running workshops with the Flucoma tools uh, and, and we run this particular example of the two-dimensional corpus exploration is that is how can how can I use more descriptors or how can I use a multivariate descriptor? Basically anything that has more than two numbers in it. And so we can leverage machine learning, namely uh, dimension reduction, to have the computer analyze high dimensional data and transform it into a low dimensional representation, which can be a really useful tool for this particular task. Um, but it's actually very widely useful in all sorts of uh, data-driven music making uh, analysis and just working with this technology more generally. So jumping right into it, I'm going to modify the analysis part of this patch. Previously, we were taking the loudness and the spectral shape, calculating the statistics and then getting a single value for each combining it into a kind of coordinate system that was then laid out onto our two-dimensional map. Um, the first step is to delete this stuff. So I'm leaving the start frame, num frames, and bang intact because we'll need those. Um, but I've got rid of all of the buff processing objects. I also uh, probably i am not going to need this. And I just want to leave the counter working down the bottom. So as promised, we're going to use a descriptor that doesn't conveniently fit onto two dimensions, which is buff MFCC. Uh, for now, you can think of this descriptor as a kind of compressed spectrum. Um, and I encourage you to go and check out the Learn Platform article on buff MFCC, um, which is a really good explanation of what these values mean and what they try to represent or model in a sound. Um, if we take the source as sound and the features as MFCC, and we should also do num chance one to only process one channel in case there's a mixture of mono and stereo files. If I, if I just process the whole file for now, just so we can see, we get a 13 channel buffer by default. And it is as many frames long as there are analysis windows. So I'll just say N frames. And each one of these channels is uh, an MFCC coefficient. So you might think of them kind of like bands of a spectrum um, in this case. What I'm then going to do is take the statistics of each band or each coefficient. Um, and so I'll call this um, MFCC stats. Just neaten as I go, otherwise it will get horrendous. And if you remember how it worked previously, we should get seven statistics for each channel or seven statistics for each coefficient. So we still have 13 channels, but we have seven statistics. Um, now it's still not very convenient to plot this. Um, you know, we have 91. Let me check. Indeed, 91 values here um, that describe a single sound segment. To get a little bit closer to a two-dimensional plot, we're going to flatten these values. I'm going to say destination flat. Now, we've never seen this object before. Buff flatten. Um, and it's a really useful one for these kind of machine learning processes that we're about to, to touch on very briefly. Um, what buff flatten does is if we imagine we have a buffer of values that's multi-channel, let's imagine that's one channel. Let's imagine that's another channel. 
Um, do I have the same number? No. Because... So we have two channels of values here. Buff flatten will take those and it can do it this two ways, but it will turn it into a single channel buffer of values. And by default, it will do this. It will go every frame of, uh, sorry, every channel at uh, an index. So we can go 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 100, 2, 200, 3, 300, 4, 400, 5, 500. So picking channel wise, so we go da, 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 da. it can also do the opposite orientation. So it can go zero, one, two, three, four, five, and then zero, zero, 100, 200, 300, 400, 500. So it can stack the channels end on end. It doesn't really matter which way we do this in this case. Um, we just want to have one consistent way of doing it. And what we end up with is one channel with 91 values. If I just take these values and have a look, oh, there's nothing in there. Process. Yeah, there we go. So if I have a look now, we get a big long list of values which we can think of as our kind of new descriptor that we've we've concocted. Um, it's a big soup of numbers that come from the MFCC analysis and try to describe the shape of the spectrum, or rather the, I guess, the, the wiggliness of the spectrum over time. And so this is all compacted into a, into a long list, which we can then add to our data set. And so instead of using the point adder buffer, which we were making up before, we can just use flat directly. And so if I connect these back up and go, just remove this and go back out to the top level of my patch. And I'll just do a single sound file for now. Good. You'll see an error about the data set being empty, potentially, if you've been following along. So let's have a look. What did I do wrong? Oh, I didn't hook up the bang, so we need to connect all of these uh, old parts of the patch that we had connected before. If we remember correctly, num frames here dictates how many frames it should process with the buff MFCC or audio samples in this case, and where it should start in the source buffer. And then the bang tells it to start processing. So now that I've solved that problem, go back out we'll get a complaint that the data set we provided to the plotter should be exactly two dimensions. That's the error I was looking for. And that makes sense. Because when we look in here, we have 23 rows, so one row per segment, and 91 columns. And each one of these columns will um, be one of the values from our long list that was in this buffer called flat. So this is the first part. We've created our new sort of big soup of, of numbers, which is our descriptor. And we want to take those 91 values and then use some machine learning to um, restructure it or project it into two dimensions. So we can step out of the analysis patch now and just move down to normalization scaling. The object that we're going to use to do this dimension reduction is called UMAP. And it is part of the data set family of objects in the Flucoma universe and works quite similarly to normalize. We provide it with a data set input and then and we can take the results and put it into a data set output. So that's actually going to be the first stage before normalization. So I'll move this down and move this back up. And I'll remove this patch cable. Actually, I need a little bit more space. So what we're going to do is we're going to fit transform analysis to reduction. 
So every time all that analysis is completed and we create this data set over here with 91 values per row, we're then going to tell UMAP, please take this down to uh, two dimensions. And we need to make the data set output here, which is called reduction. So once we've done that, I'll print the contents. It's a little squashed. We can see here we now have 23 rows, the same as what we had before, but we have two columns instead of 91. And these two values here per segment, they're like a new um, representation of the original data that is um, smaller, first of all, we have less values. In theory as well, it's also discarded um, much of the redundant information that was originally there and found a way to, um, I guess, focus on what's, what's really salient about the data, some kind of intrinsic structure that can be represented in less values. Unfortunately, though, it comes out in a scale which is relatively um, arbitrary or we can't really know it in advance. We have some values here that go, you know, well above one um, and potentially somewhere else in the data set. We're not seeing the whole thing. It could go well, well beneath zero. So we can actually just take the plumbing that we originally had and normalize the data so that it sits between zero and one. So I will need to change this message to say fit transform the reduction output. So this two-dimensional um, data set of 23 rows and put it into normalized. So instead of normalizing the raw data like we had before, we're now normalizing the output of UMAP. If I then do that and then I print, you can see we have similarly shaped data, but now it sits between zero and one, which is very convenient for our plotter. If I go out, we can see here we have the result of this process. So let's listen to it. And I'll just be careful. So what you'll notice, first of all, is we no longer have a sense that left and right and up and down actually map onto a specific descriptor. We no longer have a concept of centroid being up high um, when, it's, when it's bright or centri centroid being low when it's, when it's dull or the louder things being on the right or the softer things being on the left. We have a new um, space that is based on those 91 values that we produced in here being compressed into two. And so what UMAP tries to do is best represent the inner structure and the complexity of this data in less values. And in theory, things that are perceptually similar um, because of this data should, should result in being closer together on the map here in two dimensions. If we try this with a much bigger data set using my um, concat audio files abstraction here, and then hitting bang. We'll wait for a bit and see what happens. Hopefully though, we get a space where sounds that are very similar are pulled together in this two-dimensional space and sounds which are more dissimilar are further apart. And so you can see um, the shape of this output is a little less distributed than what we saw with the two descriptor approach. Let's hear it again. So we have kind of loud, um, loud, uh, I guess, diverse stuff here. We have poppy kind of band music. Percussive stuff with not a lot of tonal components. Got some modular synth and some double bass. Or rather, I think that's an acoustic bass. 
and then some kind of DC scratching glitch effects. And so this approach is really powerful because we can supply 91 values as values which describe our sounds and then have UMAP down here figure out how to best represent them in two dimensions, throwing away kind of noisy, potentially um, not meaningful data and finding a better representation for it that works in two dimensions, which is really convenient to then plot and play with. 